today here in Brazil, Fortaleza BitConf with Matthew Hellier, uh, also known as Ping Pong, the lead developer of Sangram. Hello, Matthew. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hello. Yes. And now we have here some questions we're going to ask from Matthew about Tangram technology, background, and few things we we are going to do for until my night, right? Uh, so the first question is, how the what are hash-based payments? So hash-based payments simply is a payment system made out of hashes where uh, a traditional blockchain or DAG uses public cryptography. So mm -hmm. we don't use any public cryptography within the system. It's purely based on hashes. Mm -hmm. And that's what our whole uh, system revolves around is hashes. The algorithms that we incorporate within the system uh, to create the hashes, uh, we use Argon2 mm -hmm. and uh, to secure the Merkle uh, DAG, we use uh, Blake2B. Nice. So that's in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another question. Um, how does the token generation work in an offline transaction, the token generation? Right. So any tokens that you have received um, are challengeable. So before you can actually, well, you can always just create a token out of thin air, but uh, the verification process of the token will always be challenged either on the client side or on the node side. So there's no information leaked uh, on the server, so the server doesn't know who you are. All it cares about is what the token looks like when it comes to the node. So like I explained yesterday, we have uh, seven attributes that, create, uh, that make up the token. Uh, within the layer of the token, we have a subset which makes up the amount and we have a secured uh, a random key, uh, which we call a, a, a serial number, which we call the serial number. Mm -hmm. And out of that, we uh, have what's called the proof. Mm -hmm. okay? So if I simply explain what happens to the token as it's going through its phases of being generated, it comes from a master key. And the master key yeah. is a key derived function, which means that you can create sub keys out of the master key. Mm -hmm. And if one of the sub keys get compromised, it won't lead back to any other sub key or the master key itself. So the remaining uh, attributes within the token are used to uh, derive uh, key functions to create hashes on top of hashes, which uh, 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 enable the token to go through its own uh, sort of process mm -hmm. to have the attributes stored. So when it goes back onto the, uh, the, the Merkle DAG, we have a, uh, a way of verifying that it is authentic and the token is uh, 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 regarded as a, a, a token ownership, i.e. you have the master key to create the token. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the master key, then the token was never yours in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's how the token basically gets generated. Um, we will obviously explain more about it, how it actually uh, works uh, in a programmatical way. At the moment, uh, I'm just explaining it as I see it. Uh, yeah, that's very nice. That, that's something the community asks a lot in Discord, right? Yes, they, they're very interested in how everything works because uh, right now, uh, we've been you know, working undercover, we haven't been releasing uh, a lot mm -hmm. of information, uh, so we've been keeping it very low. Mm -hmm. But obviously it's coming to a point where um, <coughs> you know, people are getting restless, mm -hmm. they want to have more information mm -hmm. about the technology, uh, so we want to give them the opportunity or ourselves the opportunity to mm -hmm. give this information to them. Yeah. So hopefully when we do come around or come away from the BitConf in Brazil, we will have more ammunition from the community side to ask us nice. more questions about it. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, could you explain a little bit about Tangerine's Merkle DAG? So the Merkle DAG is probably based on uh, GitHub, uh, 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 GitHub's Merkle DAG, mm -hmm. except that our structure is, is obviously completely different. Um, in terms of uh, the Merkle is obviously the, 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 the hashes that, that secure the, the, uh, the tree structure mm -hmm. and I suppose what you want to call the DAG aspect is actually the data. But we create obviously a directly acyclical graph out of the data 
and what we will do with uh, the DAG itself, we'll have multiple DAGs or multiple chains that make up the total supply if we divide it by 256. Mm. So there will be multiple chains, um, 256 of them, and within every chain there will be 714 tokens mm -hmm. that will be living inside every single chain. Mm. So you will never have a, uh, well the theory is you'll never have the, uh, uh, you'll never be uh, allocated to one single chain. Mm -hmm. So we look at this as uh, you're living between the branches and the leaf of the entire DAG, whether it's splitting chains, it's going to be seen as one but you'll be spread across. This is how we create unlinkability, untraceability, mm -hmm. and also the word everybody's and looking for is fungibility. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> obviously, being a hash-based payment system, it's gonna be a lot faster. There's no need for us to do uh, tree uh, reversal lookups because the image is basically like a primary key and we can do an instant check. Mm -hmm. to do any uh, checks or verifications or stuff like that. Um, so, okay. yeah. And also, the way we've put it together, why we, we want to separate the chains, is that <clears throat> in the event when chains become heavier or top heavy or bottom heavy, when they're running in a, in a linear uh, a, a track, we can create what's called sharding. Mm -hmm. So we can take part of the chains, maybe this train is a bit too heavy, maybe there's congestion over here, this one's a bit lighter, and then we can start pulling uh, trains across multiple servers or multiple nodes, and we can create what's called load balancing. So we reduce the lift off the nodes to, you know, to, to, to run the full DAG mm -hmm. itself. So we, we are looking at ways of making it lighter and faster. Nice. Uh, Matthew, could you tell us, uh, what is the redemption key? The redemption key, right. So once you've received a token, <clears throat> okay, so it, it all starts off if you receive a token. So imagine if I was the, the Genesis block, I, I'm not gonna receive a token. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the Genesis block and uh, I'm going to create maybe the, the development uh, fund uh, wallet. So what I'll do is I'll take the token which makes up the 183 million supply mm -hmm. and I will uh, encode the master key that created the token mm -hmm. and there are three pieces that make up the redemption key. One of them being is the proof of the token mm -hmm. which I previously said was the amount and the serial number which creates the proof and then the two uh, separate uh, uh, secret keys which you then encode your master key against the token to actually produce these two se uh, secret keys. So what will happen is then you will use uh, uh, the, the recipient's uh, public key to uh, 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 encrypt uh, the redemption key into the sealed box. Obviously there's a, there's a MIMO field and uh, uh, yeah, so the memo field, which is uh, the plain text that stores if you want to create somebody a receipt or proof of payment or what do you want to call it, this will go into the sealed box and it will then go and uh, uh, issue it to the um, message pool where you can go and pick it up at, at a later time. So as a sender, you never print a block. As a receiver, you will print your own blocks or let's say your own tokens. So now the redemption key can be passed around in many ways. It can go through the system, i.e. through the Tangram network, or if you feel more comfortable or whatever the case is, you can always uh, text message the, the redemption key or pass it through a message app like uh, Telegram or WhatsApp, uh, if you prefer WhatsApp, or Signal, which is more secure. Uh, once you pick up the redemption key, you then obviously pipe it through or feed it through to the, uh, your client wallet. Um, then what will happen is it will go and look at the, the proof of the token. Once it's decrypted the data, it will look at the proof of the token. Mm -hmm. It will then go and look at uh, the index or the position or the location where that token originated from. Mm -hmm. It will then download the data or the token to uh, issue with a challenge mm -hmm. you will then use your master key to to uh, 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 encode uh, the attributes of the token if everything is great then uh, we would say that the, the transfer of ownership 
from sender to recipient has been successful. Okay, so in that regard, there's no way that anybody can steal your token from you. Okay, so uh, part of the the wallet, we're just storing references to these tokens in the tree. So <coughs> if your wallet goes missing, your computer dies, or it got compromised through a hack. There's no way for the attacker uh, to, to steal any tokens from you because they don't exist. Mm. The only way they exist is through the master key. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the master key is very important. Mm. We will be looking at Shamir's secret sharing to uh, uh, keep the, the master key safe or we can yeah. create a paper wallet or whatever the circumstances are, however you want to generate it. Mm. Uh, but the master key is the key. Got it. So even if they hack or uh, crack, which is highly unlikely, a token, it's going to take them quite a long time. Mm -hmm. They don't have the bulk of all your tokens, mm -hmm. so there's nothing really to hack in your mm -hmm. wallet because they're not going to get anything from the wallet unless they steal the, the master key. Mm -hmm. Unless you were careless and you gave it to someone or you left it where everybody could see it or you made a transaction where someone was watching you, mm -hmm. that's the only way they can do it. Okay. Thank you very much for talking. Thank you very much, busy, uh, Pedro, Pedro. Sorry. Um, all so, the oh, the last question: What do you think about Brazil, Bitcoin in general? I think uh, Brazil is a great country. Uh, I'll definitely come back here again. I'm bringing my wife, my kids. We want to go <laughs> and party at uh, Coca Cabana, <laughs> and we want to come back to Fortaleza. And uh, how would you say Notaria, Notaria? Oh, sorry. Notaria. Uh, 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 where 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 Pizzi is from? Not oh, Niterai. Niterai. I want to okay. definitely go there. It's a very beautiful place. Yeah. So thank you for having us. Uh, thank It you very much. Great All opportunity. Right. And bye bye. Bye bye.